Hey, what's going on everybody? So, in this video I'm going to answer the question. What about Java in 2018? So I'm just making, uh, I guess I should be making a coffee now since we're talking about Java, but I'm actually just making a tea. I had a coffee this morning. So, what about learning Java in 2018? Is this a wise choice? People ask me this all the time. So I figure I'm going to do a video. Short answer is that Java is part of a group of very modern programming languages, include Java, JavaScript, C Sharp, Swift, uh, PHP, Python, and there are several others. And every single language has its strong points and its weak points. And what language you choose to learn largely depends on A, the type of work that you want to do, and B, what are the job opportunities for you with a particular language. In a recent video, I talked about how AI programming with Python is a growing industry, but a lot of these AI jobs require that you have a degree that goes along with the AI programming. That means even if you are really good at Python and AI, a lot of companies may not hire you if you don't have the prerequisite degree. So how do you figure out whether or not you can get an AI job is you check the job listings, see what they're looking for and see whether or not you have what they want. Sometimes they require degrees, sometimes they may not. It's hard, it's hard to say. Again, you gotta look in terms of where you happen to be in the companies you're interested in working for. So with Java, we have a very similar circumstance because though Java is so widely used, a lot of the Java development these days is in older apps, maybe maintaining legacy code bases and or working for very large organizations, very large companies. So if you have very large companies, because of bureaucracy, because of HR department, you're going to probably need some sort of related higher level education to get those type of jobs. Number one. Number two, you're probably going to, well, number two, you're going to have to like the idea of working for very large organizations. And that's cool because there are advantages to that versus working for small companies or being a freelancer. A lot of the choices that you make in your programming career has a lot to do with how you think and how you want to work. What lifestyle do you want? Some people really like the idea of working for a big multinational corporation and to go work there to uh, write big huge apps in what, whatever language uh, they happen to use. Typically it's going to be Java or it's going to be uh, C sharp.net, those sorts of things. So Java in 2018 is extremely viable. It's still widely used, but you're going to be finding yourself not in the startup world, not in a freelancing, not um, in small business. You're going to be finding yourself in big corporations, big companies. And so you have to, again, understand that is the environment you're going to be working in. Other people may go, well, I maybe want to do a startup type of thing. If you want to do startup work, you're looking at JavaScript as a much better choice, or Python as a much better choice, or Java or um, PHP a much better choice in that regard. Simply because that's that's just the way the market is. Why don't small companies use Java? Typically, there's always exceptions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Let, let me make a blanket statement. Everything that you hear in this world, when people say Typically this happens, typically that happens, you know, there's always exceptions to every rule, right? You know, most people who play the lottery lose. Yes, some people do win. Every week people win, but the vast majority lose. So we can say that about programming in Java. Yes, there are small companies who still program in Java, maybe if they're doing Android apps or something. But Versus the number of Java programmers that are working for very large organizations, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't even come close. So there's, again, always exceptions to the rule. So let's get that aside. That's one of my pet peeves, by the way. When you make a statement like I just made, and then somebody feels the need to point out, but yeah, I know somebody. That, yeah, some people who smoke don't get heart attacks or cancer. 
But a lot of people who smoke, most of the time if you become a smoker, uh, uh, you're going to get some either cancer, heart problems, you're going to get all kinds of illnesses related to smoking. Yes, there are exceptions, but generally speaking, it's something worth avoiding. All right, so if you don't know my channel, you don't know who I am, I started writing code in 1994. And I started writing Java in the 90s. Java was, for a period of time, several years, in fact, my number one language. It was my favorite language by far. I just liked how when you wrote Java code, it worked. It was very consistent. and It was easy to understand because of that consistency. These days, though, unless, again, I was going to go work on legacy apps, legacy meaning big apps that have been around for a while but you have to maintain that are written in Java, I wouldn't be writing Java. If I was going to be writing native Android apps, you could do it in Java, but I'd rather do it in a more nimble language like Kotlin that just came out and go in that route. Um, I generally favor uh, faster writing, faster write time in languages versus faster runtime. What do I mean by that? I rather have a language that runs a little bit slower when it's actually being processed, when the code's actually being run but it's a lot quicker to write the code. Uh, I find that it's, it's more, it's, it's a wiser choice to go with those type of languages. Like Python, for instance, doesn't run very fast, but in the AI world, people will generally write mostly Python versus doing it in C++. Why? Because I was watching uh, some videos with some big AI programmers, and they say they write the core engine in C++, for the speed, but everything else, 95% of, of, uh, of the application is Python because it's just so much easier to write the code in Python. So they, as a result, they get, they get the, uh, the AI solutions, the AI applications out much more easily, much more quickly. And so what they do is they use Python to call the C libraries or C++ libraries, if, you get, if it's either or. And that's just a smarter way to go. Another reason why it's smarter to go with nimbler, faster write time languages is that um, processors and computers are just getting faster and faster and faster every year. So uh, we've seen it just in the last 15 years where uh, the speed at runtime issue has become less and less important as processors get faster and faster and faster. So yes, Python for just about any operation is going to run much, much slower than C++ or Java. But because processes are so fast, you're not going to see a difference in reality. You're not going to see a difference. This is not always the case. Again, there's exceptions. <laughs> but that's why you see in many, many application development environments and many, excuse me, take that, let me step back. I don't want to confuse people. In many companies, uh, they will use a few languages to put out an app. So for a typical video game, they might use two or three programming languages to get it out. The core engine will be in C or C++, and then they'll use Python for some parts, or they may use Java for other parts, and depending on how they structure their, uh, their game and their application. Any web app uses a few languages. It uses HTML, the markup language, uses CSS, the styling language, uses JavaScript, definitely for front end. They might use JavaScript for back end. They might use PHP. They might use Ruby. They might use Python. They might use Java. They might use C Sharp. They, they are probably going to be using SQL. So just in your typical web app, you're seeing at least four different languages going to be used, possibly two or three programming languages. Anyway, way off on the tangent. So you understand where Java comes in in 2018? Is there a risk that you learn a particular language like Java and go, oh no, I wasted my time, I can't find jobs there, I don't want to do it. No, there's no wasting time when you learn something new, especially a programming language. I have an expression, the more you learn, the more you earn. If you decided to learn Java and you went through Java and you spent six months a year working with Java, learning it, playing around with it, and then you decide you want to do Python or you decide you want to do JavaScript, or heaven forbid, you decide you want to do PHP and get into the freelance game. Because in terms of freelance development, PHP is king by far. In terms of freelance, I went into that in other videos, so I won't go into it here. But so let's say you, you, you worked on the Java stuff, and then all of a sudden you say, eh, I don't want to do Java. And you, did you waste all your time with Java? No, 
because learning Java, all that knowledge is going to go into your Python, it's going to go into your JavaScript, it's going to go into your C Sharp, it's going to go into your, uh, whatever, pick a language. It's not lost. I have written commercial software in nine different programming languages over the years. And every time I learned a new programming language, my overall skill as a programmer increased because I was able to see how different languages approach similar things. So when I learned Java, Java was my first object-oriented language, really. And then, uh, well, JavaScript was. And then I learned Java, and I saw how Java did it from JavaScript, and then I was like in PHP, and then I was in uh, Python, and C Sharp, etc. Every time I learned a new language that was object-oriented, I had a different take on object-oriented programming, which made uh, my understanding of object-oriented programming that much better. So, you know, three languages in, and I go back to one of the earlier, earlier languages, my ability to write good code in the earlier language got much better because I learned two, three other ones uh, afterwards. You see where I'm going with that? So don't worry too much. Don't fret too much about learning the wrong language. It's almost an impossibility. It's almost an impossibility. I hope that makes sense, and uh, cheers.